Welcome to another video featuring Global Graphics and Mako SDK. Mako is written in C and C++ and designed and tested to be multi-platform. We recently ported the SDK to Windows IoT and this video is an example of a solution that makes use of it. So the brief was create a Windows IoT application that can overlay data onto a predefined PDF form make that new PDF available so it can be uploaded to an FTP location or maybe emailed and also to print the file to a PC or printer at a given IP address and to make this real it was to be deployed to a real device and I chose a Raspberry Pi 3 running Windows IET so I needed a blank PDF form that I could work with in the application so I just created that in Word and saved it out as a PDF. I also created some dummy data in Excel and saved that as a text file. So the application has got to take the PDF form and it's got to determine where the fields are. So to make my life a little bit easier I had Acrobat add form fields for me across the entire page and then that gives me the geographic positions where I need to position the text and you'll see when we look at the code how that information is made use of. Once that happens, then we can overlay the data onto the form. Finally, I can save that completed PDF as a file and also create PCL or possibly PostScript and send that print stream to a printer. So next, let's see the solution in action. I've already deployed the app onto the uh, device. You can see it here, it's called Report Generator UWP. All I need to do is choose Start from the Actions menu here um, to get it going. Now if I look at my Raspberry Pi, then some UI immediately is displayed. Very simple UI. I guess it wasn't really necessary to create a user interface for an application that's going to be running on an embedded device but I decided to add a simple user interface to provide some control. Clicking on the Create Report button starts the Mako process and a few seconds later a page comes out of the printer. And the display updates with the progress. So having seen the application in action, let's take a look at the code that makes it happen. Here is the development project. I started with a blank C++ Universal Windows Platform or UWP template for Windows 10. I created the user interface you saw earlier in the demo, seen here on the left, with its corresponding XAML code on the right. If we take a look at the Solution Explorer, you can see the data files in the work items folder. More on those shortly. And looking further down, you can see that the code is contained in the main page code behind to keep this example as simple as possible. A production solution that required a UI would be better built using the more complex model view, view model, or MVVM pattern. Looking at the debug options, you can see I'm building for ARM and deploying to the device for debugging. With the button highlighted in the UI, you can see the corresponding piece of XAML code. And if I scroll across, I can see the on-click event. And uh, all I need to do is press F12. And here is the code that gets run when you click the button. We'll now break this down in a short code walkthrough. This solution uses the Mako SDK. Central to Mako is the object model. This is our abstraction for the data contained in a PDF. In here, we have APIs that let you work with the content in a document. Surrounding that, we have mechanisms for input, output, rendering, transformation, and analysis. In this example, we'd be concerned with input, output, and a bit of object manipulation on the way through. Before we go through each of these steps, it's worth explaining what an assembly is as it appears several times in these steps. Basically, the object model is a big tree 
and as you dive you go from the document level down to the most minute of details. At the very root of this is an object called the iDocument Assembly. iDocument Assembly provides access to all of the documents in the file. For PDF there is only one. XPS allows several distinct documents to be present in a single package and so iDocument Assembly provides that functionality. An iDocument provides access to the pages within that document. From there we can access individual pages and then we can get access to DOM or Document Object Model Objects which represent the page content. So let's start at looking at some actual code. The first thing to do is to create a Mako instance. This is the parent from which new objects are created. For this example, we also need access to some files, the blank template file, a file containing the data we want to overlay onto the page, and a font file. I'll explain later why we need that. We also need to identify a file path on Windows IT that we can safely write to. By loading the template, I mean to load an assembly from an existing PDF document, which is what these four lines of code do, in the order of the hierarchy I described earlier, document and then page. The last object created, IDOM fixed page, is a fixed coordinate space upon which the page objects are anchored. We'll see one of those being created later. Now the new assembly. The first three lines create a new assembly, document and page. Then we link them together, first by adding the page to the document and then the document to the assembly. We also create that fixed coordinate space I described earlier, making it A4 in the units that Mako uses 96th of an inch. This bit is easy. We simply walk through the DOM objects in the source page and copy them across. Mako has a rich set of useful helper functions like clone tree and append that you see here that can dramatically reduce code complexity in your implementation. So now we're ready to add some new content. But first some preparation. Here we load the data from a text file and store those strings into an array. In this example, I kept things simple by having some data saved in a text file. Now we need to load a font to be used for drawing the text objects we'll be adding to the page. In this case, I've loaded a font file that I included as a data file in my build. And to choose a colour for the text, I have created a brush with which the font outline will be filled. I discussed earlier how form fields in the template PDF are used to guide the position of the text that is being added to the page. This is where it happens. To begin, Mako provides an array with all of the annotations on the page. Annotations could be a comment, such as a post-it note, but we are only interested in form fields, which in Mako are known as widgets. The loop cycles through the annotations looking for a widget. If one is found and we haven't exhausted the data, a glyph object is created with the text from the data file at 16 points and positioned at coordinates that are derived from the form field. The constants 12 and 4 provide some padding so that the text is not overlapping the lines that surround the field. So having added the content, we update the page and we write the assembly to a PDF. The output class has a large number of parameters that can be set to control how the PDF is written, controlling such things as image compression, font embedding, color spaces, security and much more. But as with other Mako APIs, Mako is really good at making the right choices in the absence of specific settings. So in this case, we can be confident of creating a good quality, general purpose PDF if we leave it to Mako to choose the defaults. Finally, it's time to print. Here we use the same assembly to create a PCL print stream. It could just as easily be PostScript or PCL Excel. Finally, we use some non-Mako code to connect to a local printer and transmit the PCL data. That concludes this Mako video. I hope you enjoyed it.